AI, the brand new and revolutionary digital album from Paradise Decay is now available on Bandcamp. Cool. Hi guys, PD here, welcome to the channel, welcome to another new video. Today I've got a very special unboxing. I've got two brand new VR headsets to unbox. Uh, these packages came in the post. I'm going to do my unboxing video. Sadly, because I can't really see, I'm still legally blind. I can't really showcase the headsets. If you want to know the status of the operations of my eyes, I've got two cataracts so I can't really see. I would highly recommend you check out my Iron Man 2 video on the Quest 2. Because I'm not able to actually wear the headsets to tell you how good they are. If you want to know anything about the headsets, if you've got any questions, um, let me know in the comments below. And I'll get my good friend Daisynetic to come around here and he's going to try both headsets. He's going to put them on and he's going to tell you how good they are, how clear they are, that sort of thing. So for today, I'm just going to be unboxing both headsets and we're going to see what's inside the boxes and I'm going to give you my initial impressions of both headsets. We're going to start with the top box. Okay, so in box number one, and I'm going to leave the specs of the headset on screen as well. So if you want to see the specs. So we have the brand new Pico 4 and this is uh, manufactured from the people who make TikTok and it is like a Quest 2 competitor. It's a standalone headset, it's got inside out tracking, very similar to the Quest 2. Full disclosure guys, Pico did send me this unit uh, for review purposes, I did not have to pay for it, I'm under no disclosure or nothing. So I can give you my honest thoughts. Okay. So there we go inside the box. So very nicely packaged. There's like a box in here as well. I'm guessing that's all the cables and instructions. We've got all the uh, instruction booklets, the warranty, that sort of thing. In this little box here, we've got like a, a light blocker for the nose. Uh, charging cables in the bottom of the box. We have a spacer here for people who wear glasses. You put this on the headset if you wear glasses and it prevents your glasses from rubbing on the lenses. Moving on to the headset itself. It's uh, nicely boxed. We've got the controllers inside as well. So this is the headset itself. Very light. My initial impressions taken out of the box and like I said I'll leave all the specs on the screen for you to read it feels quite balanced it's a lot smaller form factor on the front than on the Quest 2 so this is the Quest 2 uh, this is the Pico 4 you can probably see the uh, smaller form factor. I think the uh, Pico 4 uses um, smaller lenses, pancake lenses. So I'm trying to show you the balance of the headset. So it's about there, the balance. It feels a lot lighter than the Quest 2. Um, I do have the uh, Corys headphones on mine though. But it does feel slightly lighter. We're going to unveil the iconic look of the headset which is this uh, really nice black finish on the front we're going to have a look at the lenses as well
So these are pancake lenses, I do believe. No circles like you can in the in the Quest 2. We have one solid strap. This is quite solid. It's not flexible. I don't know if you're able to remove the strap and use products like uh, the Bobo VR, that sort of thing. Let's remove the back. On the back we've got the adjuster. You turn this to fit it to your head. You loosen it or tighten it. We're going to have a closer look at the lenses. Let me just take off the uh, face plate. So the face plate clips out and then you'll be able to, if you wear glasses, you'll be able to put the spacer in there and then you put that back in and it's going to prevent your glasses from rubbing on the lenses. So there's a closer look at the lenses. I'm hoping you can see it on the camera. So the faceplate is like a cloth, spongy material and in the back, the back is more like a rubbery texture, very squishy. I do believe the faceplate clips on like a magnet. Very similar design to the Pico Neo 3, you can tilt up the headset to put it on. The first thing you notice is how light it is. It's very light. It feels very balanced. That's not going to go anywhere. I can see the light bleed under my nose, so I will need the, the nose blocker. The uh, face plate does feel a little bit heavy on the face if you tighten it too much. It does feel quite nice though, guys. A bit lighter than the Quest 2. So on the front we've got the four cameras, there's a camera on the bottom and on the top. This headset uses inside out tracking which is the standard for standalone VR at the moment. There's also a camera inside there, I don't know if you can see it, and um, that's for the pass through. So there should be a camera in there. The PK4 has got a vent on the top. The sound is very similar to the Quest 2. It travels down these straps and you can see where it comes out there, look. So the visuals and the sound is something I can't really show you guys because of my eyes. So I'm going to have to get my friend to um, test it out for me and that will be in a later video. I think this is going to charge up very similar to the uh, Quest 2 as well with the uh, USB there, look. USB-C, uh, that's how you're going to charge up the headset. These are the uh, controllers. Uh, these remind me of the, uh, the Pimax ones with the, uh, the design of them. So they do feel quite heavy. Um, it feels like the batteries are inside. Very similar layout with the buttons to the, uh, the Quest 2. With these designs though, some games you can actually hit the uh, top of the uh, controller there. That's something you're going to have to learn with the types of games you play. So here's a comparison with the Quest 2 controller and the uh, Pico 4 controller. And as you can see, very similar layout with the buttons. They are about the same length and width. Okay, on to box number two. Uh, this is from Meta. Okay, we have the brand new MetaQuest Pro. Now, I am a Meta ambassador. They did send me this headset for free. I'm under no disclosure, so I can talk about this headset as I like. This is not a gaming headset. It's more of a business headset. But myself, I'm a gamer, so Naturally, I'm going to be using this headset as a gaming headset. 
and it's not cheap these are quite expensive okay let's do the unboxing uh, this has got a really nice handy opener here open the box you guys get to see the headset first okay guys that looks really professional and it feels professional as well I noticed straight away a big difference in the quality of this headset taken out of the box compared to like the Pico 4 um, it's really high quality material that I can tell straight away and again I'm going to leave all the specs for this headset on the screen again it's a very small form factor look and again this uh, headset uses the pancake lenses so this is the Quest 2 this is the uh, Quest Pro and you can see a difference in the, uh, the size of the uh, form factor they're about the same length wise the Quest Pro does feel a lot slightly heavier than the Quest 2 as well and that's going to be a result of all the technology inside this headset it's got eye tracking it's got face tracking very similar to the uh, Pico 4 it's got the uh, the ratchet on the back to uh, tighten the headset now unlike the uh, Pico 4 this one does not lift up um, it's solid it does not feel like you're able to remove this part of the headset so you might be struggling to use um, external um, devices like the Bobo VR head straps, that sort of thing. I do know though, I've heard a rumour that Bobo VR are working on a battery pack for the Quest Pro. I don't know how that's going to work. Okay, so let's have a look at the lenses. We have the lenses there. Now I do know people have been trying these outside, I would probably not recommend it. Um, I've got a feeling this warning on here is telling you to keep it out of the sunlight. Now the one thing about this headset I'm really excited for is the uh, mixed reality. Um, I've always wanted to try a headset with mixed reality and that's going to allow me to play games like Beat Saber in my room I'm going to be able to see my room and I'm going to have the box coming towards me that's something I'm really really curious about okay lots of strips everywhere I can feel now this headset being so dark it's really hard for me to see all the features all the cameras are featured on the uh, front of the headset behind this black mask and it's also got um, pass-through cameras as well these pass-through cameras are going to allow you to play mixed reality games like Beat Saber, Demio, that sort of thing. The one thing I've noticed about this headset, there's no supporting strap on the top. Well, this headset is supposed to lean on your forehead. Very similar to how the PlayStation VR headset works. It's going to relieve a lot of stress on your face. Again, it feels really nicely balanced. and I'm going to try it on for size for me that feels really comfortable now one of my favorite VR headsets is the PlayStation VR this is very similar to how it fits on my head and it's just resting on the top of my forehead it's a perfect fit guys now this headset you can notice the light from the side and you can get blockers to block that light if you want the full immersion the reason why there's a gap here is because this device is uh, like a mixed reality type device so if you like using a computer you can see your computer on the screen and then you can have like virtual screens above your main computer being able to see a lot more of the surroundings from the side adds a lot more to the mixed reality experience but like I said if you want the full VR experience where you're closed in you can buy magnetic blockers for the sides and also for the front where the nose part is there to be honest with you when I'm playing games on the Rift S I do like to be able to look through my nose to see why I'm in my environment so for me that bit of light 
where my nose gap is it's not really a problem but this feels really comfortable this does wobble quite a bit so I can feel it wobbling just by doing that I've got a feeling if you're going to be playing some really intensive VR games uh, this has got the potential to fall off like I said guys this headset has been designed for people to use mostly as a business headset so you're not going to be moving your head around like you would in a game like Half-Life Alex like I said I'm a gamer so it's natural for me to use this headset as a gamer so for me it's a no-brainer to use this headset because I've got it would I go out and buy one myself probably not because they are outside my price range they are very expensive okay so let's have a closer look at the lenses and again there's no rings nice flat lenses the material on the back is like a rubbery sponge like a leathery sponge feels really nice same material on the top as on the back really nice soft leathery foamy type material uh, and it feels really comfortable for me but like all headsets the comfort factor only comes into effect when you spent a few hours playing trying games that sort of thing so initially both the uh, Pico 4 and the uh, Quest Pro feel really nice on my head very similar to the uh, Pico 4 the sound travels down these straps and it comes out and enters your ear inside here onto the controllers and I've heard a lot of good reports about these controllers these are supposed to be amazing they are really heavy straight out of the box really heavy so the batteries are already inside now the uh, special features about these controllers are each controller has got inside a microchip and they've got three cameras so these cameras can track anywhere unlike the Quest 2 controllers which rely on gyroscopes and the headset picking up the controllers these will track anywhere there'll be no lag so I'll be able to put these controllers behind my head and they will be tracked perfectly now the Quest 2 does a really good job with the Quest 2 controllers but as soon as they go outside your head the controllers disappear and the Quest 2 software is then working out where they're going to reappear well these controllers are going to be tracked all the time they are very dark I can't really see them with my eyes so let me just show you guys they feel really nice and you might notice there's no rings this time because of the built-in cameras they no longer need the rings and these are the tracking rings that the Quest 2 uses to track the controllers although these are not gaming controllers I do know lots of people who are going to be buying these for the Quest 2 there's no ring so you're not going to bang them together they feel really really nice and um, you've got very similar button layouts look thumbstick and uh, even the controllers feel premium quality build and people have been telling me these are controllers far beyond their means so these have basically been designed for future tech and you'll probably see something like this with the Quest 3 which is rumoured to be coming out next year one of the features of the Quest Pro I'm really excited about is this thing here this is a docking port this is going to allow your Quest 2 to charge while it's on your table so I no longer have to uh, plug my Quest Pro into my PC to charge it up I can put it on for a few hours take it off put it on here and it's going to charge up and there's a little diagram there showing me how to put the controllers on the to charge up and these should be magnetic so there is a way for these to go on here to charge up I can't really see what I'm doing so I'm going to have to wait for my wife to come home and she's going to um, sort this part out for me last one name means least we've got this box here and a box here okay so these look like the uh, the light blockers for the sides 
I am so used to picking up these headsets with the uh, centre strap. It feels unnatural to pick these up from the sides. Okay, so these are like magnetic. Uh, they just go on there and then clip into place. These are very flimsy, made of like rubber. So that's now going to block the light from the sides. So these are the light blockers on and they do block the light from the side. Now if you don't want them, you just pull them off. In the top of the box, I just discovered this thing here. I do believe that's like a, a plastic cover to um, protect the front of the headset. So in this box we have got, we got a UK plug and charging cable. And there's also, these must be the instructions here. Yeah, we've got like the manual inside and a warranty as well. There's also these things here. I do believe these are for the, uh, the controller to keep the uh, straps in place. I can't read the text guys, so it's really hard for me to work out what these are. So these are the uh, controllers on the charging dock. So there you go guys, I have heard that the uh, Quest Pro screens are really nice and sharp. I do believe they've got like 30% more pixels than the Quest 2. The more pixels you can get into a headset, the better the quality and the better the sharpness, that sort of thing. So there we go guys, we have the Quest Pro from Meta and the uh, Pico 4 from Pico. Two brand new headsets on the market. Now if you've got any questions, like I said, leave the questions in the comments below the video. I'm going to get my good friend Daisnetic to come round and try out both headsets. Both are standalone headsets. You can connect both headsets to your PC. They've both got really good pass-through cameras. I don't know if the Pico 4 has got um, AR, so I don't know if there's any like mixed reality games you can play on the Pico 4. You can on the Quest Pro and that's something I'm really excited to um, check out. So thank you for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe, be sure to my little bell, I'll see you in the next one, bye! So there we go inside the box.